Okay, so in this example, I'm going to look at variation of parameters to solve differential equations. And I'm going to look at a second order differential equation. You can easily expand this or generalize this procedure for higher order examples as well. You do this exact same thing, you're just going to get, it turns out a larger system of equations you'll see, and it just gets more, just more sloppy just because you have more equations to solve. So, but same idea. So, what this method does, it calculates a particular solution of y double prime plus p times y prime plus q times y equals f. These are all just functions of x. Given a fundamental set of solutions, y sub 1, y sub 2 of the associated homogeneous equation, y double prime plus py prime plus qy equals 0. So we're just taking the original equation, and instead of having this function f of x on the right, we're just going to have 0. Okay, so let's talk about the method here real quick, and then I'm going to do an actual example. So the method, the first thing you have to do is find a fundamental set of solutions, y1, y2, of that homogeneous equation. This is already kind of a sticking point because there's not general procedures to do this. Uh, certainly there's, there's methods for lots of different cases, but sometimes even getting started finding this fundamental, fundamental set of solutions can be a problem. If you do have one solution, if you can find at least one, we can use reduction of order to find the other. And I've definitely done examples about reduction of order, about how you go about finding that second example given the first one. So, okay, in my example, the first example I'm going to do at least, I'm going to, we're going to be given the fundamental set of solutions for free. Okay, so after that, it's, uh, to me, it seems relatively straightforward, at least in this, this second order case. What we do is we solve the system of equations v1 prime times y1 plus v2 prime times y2. We set that equal to zero. And then our other equation, v1 prime times y1 prime plus v2 prime times y2 prime equals f. We're going to solve that for the functions v1 prime, v2 prime. Once we have those, we'll calculate an antiderivative, and that's going to help us come up with our, our particular solution and also our general solution. So I should say somewhere, I, I left this out, once we have that, our solution... Our solution is going to look like y equals v1 times y1 plus v2 times y2. This is going to be uh, a particular a particular solution. Okay, so that's going to be the idea. So once we figure out v1 prime, v2 prime, we can figure out v1 and v2, multiply that by the original fundamental set, and that's going to give us a particular solution. So that's why we're interested in finding v1 and v2. Alrighty, so let's do an example here. So suppose that we're already given again for free that x and x to the third, that is a fundamental set of solutions to the equation x squared times y double prime minus 3x times y prime plus 3y equals 0. We're going to find the general solution of x squared times y double prime minus 3xy prime plus 3y equals 4x to the seventh. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is sort of put this into the correct form that I want. And the form that we want is, we want just y double prime at the beginning. We don't want this this uh, function of x hanging out front. So all I'm going to do to get started is just divide both sides. I'm going to divide both sides, in this case, by x squared. So if we do that, we'll be left with y double prime. 3x divided by x squared, that's going to leave us with 3 over x, again, times y prime. Well, 3 divided by x squared is 3 divided by x squared, multiplied by y. And then 4x to the 7th divided by x squared, that'll simply be 4x to the 5th power. All right, so now we have to solve our system. So we have to solve our system. So again, x and x to the 3rd, those were our fundamental set of solutions. So I'm going to denote uh, x as our y sub 1. And I'm going to denote x to the third as our y sub 2. And now all I'm going to do is just look at this system of equations. That's what we're going to have to solve. So we've got v1 prime times y1, which is x, plus v2 prime times y2, which is going to be x to the third. And then the other equation will be v1 prime. And then it says take the derivative of our y1. So the derivative of uh, x here is simply going to be 1. 
and then we have plus v2 prime. Then we do the same thing. We take the derivative of x to the third, which is going to be 3x squared. And then on the right side, we use our function uh, f, which in this case is going to be 4x to the fifth power. So now all we have to do is solve this system of equations. So I'm going to solve this using substitution. Feel free to solve it any way you want. So if we take our first equation, if we solve, I, I just solved this for, for, what did I solve it for? Probably just v1 prime, and yeah. So I've got v1 prime times x. We can subtract the other term, so v2 prime times x to the third. Well, if we divide both sides simply by x, we've got v1 prime equals, we'll have negative v2 prime, then x to the third over x, well, hey, that's just x squared. Now all I'm going to do is just substitute that into our second equation. So v1 prime, that's going to be negative v2 prime times x squared, plus we've got, again, our v2 prime times 3x squared, that's going to equal 4x to the fifth power. Okay, so if we combine our like terms, we've got negative x squared, we have a positive 3x squared. That's going to give us 2x squared times v2 prime. We have 4x to the fifth still hanging out on the right side. Well, we can just divide both sides by 2x squared. And now we're going to have that v2 prime equals 2 times x to the third power. So that's already part of what we need. So now that we have that, we can just go back and simply solve for v1 prime. So now I'm just going to substitute it back in here now. So that tells us that v1 prime is going to be negative v2 prime, which is 2x to the third. And then we multiply that by x squared. So it simply says that v1 prime is going to be negative 2x to the fifth power. All right, so far so good. And now we're almost there. We just have to calculate some antiderivatives and, and to come up with a particular solution, once we have the antiderivatives, we'll just calculate it using uh, this bottom equation. Now, it's not always possible to come up with a nice, clean antiderivative. You know, these are very simple functions that we can integrate. Sometimes you have to express your solution in terms of a definite integral, which which is okay. Sometimes that just simply happens. So, but this one is going to work out a little bit a little bit nicer for us. All right, so let's calculate some antiderivatives. Uh, for these, you don't have to stick on the, the the constants. You don't have to worry about that stuff. So let's see. So v1 prime, that's negative 2x to the fifth. Well, if we compute an antiderivative, that's just simply going to give us negative 2x to the sixth over 6, which is going to be negative x to the sixth over 3. So that's going to be our function v1. Same thing to calculate uh, our v2. So v2 prime is 2x to the third power. And if we simply calculate v2, we would get 2x to the fourth over 4. So 2x to the fourth over 4 would just leave us with x to the fourth over 2. And now I'm just going to simply fill in my equation. We said to get the particular solution. We said to get our particular solution, we just use this equation y equals v1 times y1 plus v2 times y2. So that's what I'm going to do. So v1, we said that's negative x to the sixth over 3. Recall that our original y1, that was the first particular solution we had, uh, which was, excuse me, the, one of the fundamental set of solutions. So we said y1 was equal to x plus v2, which is x to the fourth over 2. We multiply that by our other, uh, our other solution. Or from our fundamental set, so y2 is equal to x to the third. And let's see here, so I'm getting negative x to the seventh over 3 plus x to the seventh over 2. And you can check my arithmetic here. 
after I simplified, I got x to the seventh over six. Okay, so this is a particular solution. This is one of our particular solutions. And to get the general solution, to get the general solution, all we do is we take our particular solution, so x to the seventh over six, and then we take the solutions from our fundamental set, which we had x, and we also had x to the third, and we just multiply those by some generic uh, coefficients. So we we'll have c1x plus c2 times x to the third. I gave myself a little extra room there, I don't know why. So it says our general solution will be x to the seventh over six plus c1 times x plus c2 times x to the third. So again, nothing too bad at all, I think. Uh, solving that 